All right. Many patients that are told they have CLL, um, they have indolent disease for many years. In fact, some patients never require therapy, and we'll go over the approach to therapy. About 15 patient, 15 percent of patients have aggressive disease at the at the diagnosis and require immediate chemotherapy, and um, and then that 30 percent will respond to therapy and they don't require uh, further therapy for many years. So once the diagnosis of of CLL or a lymphoma is made, the next step. So the first step is always, what is it? The second step is, where is it? What is the stage? The classical, there are two staging systems. The classical uh, staging system is the RISE system. Broadly, if there the low-risk, low-stage CLL is somebody who presents with an abnormal blood count, right? Has asymptomatic lymphocytosis, like high, high lymphocytes in the blood, but they don't have an increase in the size of their lymph nodes, they don't have splenomegaly, they don't have a drop in their other counts, so anemia or thrombocytopenia, and if you have each one of these components, it increases the stage, it increases the likelihood that you will require therapy. And it will also impact long-term survival. So we decided what the stage is. The next step is to look at the, um, the, the important aspects of what predicts outcome. So there are two major ones. One is the immunoglob immunoglobulin gene mutation status, which we went over in the biology, right? So if you have an unmutated CLL, so unmutated is bad, it's the earlier immature CLL, versus the more mature mutated CLL has a longer, uh, it's associated with a longer survival. And the next step is to look at the genetic status. Um, and what we look at is what we call uh, fish fluorescence in situ hybridization. A normal cell will have 46 chromosomes, as you see on the left. And what we really want to look at is to see if there are components, some genes that are missing, so deleted. So this would be a standard way to look at this. You stain the cells with probes and the genes that you want to look at. And if you're missing one, then that's an indication that there's a deletion in that gene. And there are uh, many different chromosomal abnormalities in CLL. The most important one is 17P deletion, which has the P53 gene, the guardian, which is uh, present in about 5 to 10 percent of patients. Okay, so the minority have this. The others have other chromosomal abnormalities. The second um, one, the most common, or the, the one that is associated with an inferior outcome is the 11Q for an ATM, which has a similar effect on survival. More recently, multiple different international groups have pooled their resources for all the CLL patients that have been included on trials to try to figure out what is predictive of outcome. And so this is really an international effort that, have rec that has recruited over 3,000 patients and uh, in the chemotherapy era. So none of these patients were treated with the novel agents. And they came up with risk factors, and they give points to risk factors. Uh, and the most important risk factor that you can identify here is the P53 mutation status in the chemotherapy era. Uh, the second one is the immunoglobulin gene status. And then there's uh, beta-2 microglobulin, which is a, a, um, it's a measurement of, of, of lymphoma, uh, how fast the lymphoma is growing, uh, the stage and the patient's age. So based on those risk factors, we can estimate your probability of survival at 10 years, uh, with low-risk patient being 80% and high-risk patients being 4%. 
there is a risk of having your CLL transform to something more aggressive, a large cell lymphoma, like a diffuse large B cell lymphoma. And that process is called the Richter's transformation, named after the, um, the, uh, the person who described the, this transformation. And it's, it could most commonly be a, a transformation to, to DLBCL, but it can also be Hodgkin's or other T cell lymphomas. If this happens, it's not a good thing. It's very usually uh, resistant uh, to chemotherapy and often has also the uh, P53 abnormality. 